Grace and peace to those who do the will of our Father in Heaven. I am going to be recording this, driving home. Um, sorry, I should have turned that off. Okay, um, so we know what happened, or what allegedly happened yesterday with Israel supposedly attacking Iran. There's a, there's a lot of ambiguity, a lot of uh, vagueness, and that's kind of what this whole thing is about. The fact that there there isn't much definitive um, to be known about what happened yesterday, and I have to say that what this reminds me of, and what I, I, I what I'm speaking my opinion. I'm not saying that I know exactly what's going on, or that I am uh, prophetic, or that I have some kind of special insight. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just giving you my observations and what I believe uh, this is what's, what's really kind of behind all of this. Israel, or the state of Israel, I should say, is... The behavior of the state of Israel is like a woman. And I should also say that I don't say this to be um, offensive toward women. I'm not, don't take it that way. Uh, I don't mean to sound, I don't want to say misogynistic or, or like I have anything at all against women at all, because that's not the case. I'm just making an observation. So for those of you who, who are familiar with me, you know that I wrote a book um, and I had a YouTube channel or two YouTube channels uh, dedicated, one, three actually, about uh, exposing Mystery Babylon, the spirit of Mystery Babylon. And that that spirit is a woman. So the, th the thing about a, a woman and a serpent as well is that they are subtle. They are not quite um, as in your face and abrasive as men are. It, I'm sorry if I'm making generalizations, generalizations that you feel are wrong or incorrect, but this is just what I observe. So from October 7 last year, we have seen Israel go pretty much, gen I don't know, uh, but maybe I better not say that word. I might get my video took down. The state of Israel go pretty much um, um, crazy, right? And there has been a lot of loss of innocent life on the Palestinian side. But the thing is, it was always taken as a response to a tragedy or an event that happened to them. And even their, even the extent that they have acted, that they have gone to, which I would say is pretty extreme, is still also protected or defended behind an event that happened to them, supposedly, many years before that, that happened during World War II. So there's always... <clears throat> With dealing with Israel, there's always a, a, a victimhood or a shield of victimhood that they can act behind. Everything is in response to something that happened to them. So how is this like a woman? If you, if you know about, let's just say, in, in some cases where a partner is... Where there's just some physical exchanges, right? Or some abuse happening. Or maybe there uh, as, a, as a breakup. Some kind of a problem in a relationship. Sometimes a woman wants to take an action, but she can't because she doesn't want to be seen as the instigator or the initiator or the, um, not villain, but... She doesn't want to be seen as the person responsible for the things falling apart. So often what she tries to do is provoke the man into doing something. Provoke the man either into violence or provoke him into initiating the divorce 
or the breakup or something like that. She pushes or prods and pokes in order to get him to make the move. And this is what we're seeing um, also with they're dealing with Iran. So they need to have a sort of a victimhood status or justification for their actions, the actions that they want to take. And, and so with October 7th and the Hamas attack, whether that was um, completely out of their control or not, I will not say. I have my ideas. And like, but you hear me saying now that they will set up a situation where they can create the opportunity or they can create the idea that they were justified in a response, even if they were the ones who created the situation. Do you see what I'm saying? And so with Iran, we had the attack on the um, embassy and and Iran responded with attacks on Israel. But the, the media frames it as Iran attacked Israel, not retaliated or responded to Israel. So here we have co- comparing this to a relationship where a woman actually takes an action first. But when the man responds to that action, he becomes the aggressor. He is seen as the, um, the bad guy in the situation. And that, that will usually go in the woman's favor, which is why it is why um, it's very important for a man in any situation to never respond or retaliate or to give that woman what she wants in that situation, because it will always go in her favor. Most of the time, I think. And so we have Iran being painted as the aggressor, even though it was the state of Israel who was the one who made the first strike. Now, with um, Israel in the position where they have justification to respond, we have a, an attack, allegedly, or supposedly, that happened on Iran, but it's not clear, it's not sure. And why is that? That is because Iran's response, when they responded, wasn't bad enough to give the state of Israel, the license that they wanted to, to take their next action. Again, they always have to come at it from the victim point um, point of view or the victim standpoint. So they don't have enough yet to work with because their next action, if it is not subtle enough, could make them look like the aggressor. And again, my observation is that a woman is subtle. She does not want to be seen or known as the person who instigated or started the problem. So we have a situation where Israel has not, to my knowledge, they have not stepped forward and claimed responsibility or said exactly what they did. And Iran hasn't really came out and said exactly what happened. It was sort of a... Something happened, but it's not really clear clear exactly what the truth is about what happened. And this gives Israel the uh, plausible deniability where they can say, well, we didn't actually do anything. Something happened, but we didn't do anything. We didn't um, we didn't attack. So if Iran, let's just say Iran did suffer some damage and they were to respond, they would look like the aggressor. So I know you are probably seeing the point now of what I'm saying. This is how Israel is behaving. And it is my belief that this spirit of mystery Babylon, which I um, am not an expert, but which I study, is what is uh, operating here. And that is why the behavior of the state of Israel is like a woman. It is because there is a female spirit guiding them. And I'm going to be using an image in this video from a movie named Bedazzle 
are called bedazzled. Yeah, the title is bedazzled. And in this movie, sometimes Hollywood likes to put things out there, and, and I think this is some of the um, some of the truest stuff Hollywood has ever put out. <laughs> the character of Satan, the devil Lucifer, is played by a woman, and God, so to speak, is played by a black man. Now it's everything. It's a comedy. Nothing is really taken seriously, so you're supposed to just kind of laugh at it, brush it off. It's just a comedy. It's nothing serious. But I know who the real Israel is. And I know how the um, appearance of God sitting on the throne is described. Jasper is sardine stone. That is brown. Ruddy is actually a brownish red color, which many dark skinned people are. So I'm using this image because you have a chess game between the devil and the person playing the devil and the person playing God. That kind of sums up the way I see the world. And, and, and I think, like I said, Hollywood sometimes puts the truth out there. And, but they'll do it as a joke and it, as what they did in this movie. So I believe uh, that is all I wanted to say for this video. I guess to wrap it up, I will say that, yeah, we are in some interesting times. Uh, whatever, whatever Israel does next, just know that they want to be seen as the victim, not the aggressor. Because they are subtle, <laughs> like the serpent, like the woman. And so, again, we all need to be um, watching and praying and um, understanding that salvation is, is not something that, that can be taken lightly. Like none of us have a free ticket. What I mean by that is your race isn't going to save you, your grandma, your granddaddy, Whatever else that you think that you have outside of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, and keeping the Most High's commandments, what I mean by that are the Ten Commandments, which Jesus Christ has summed up in two rules. And that is to love the Most High with all your mind, all your heart, all your strength, all your soul, all your might, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we got to be really sober right now. We don't want to be caught being a hypocrite because that's when we could punch our ticket out of here. <laughs> and we don't want to punch our ticket out of here while we're being caught being a hypocrite. So, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up and end it there. To those who do the will of our Father in heaven, may our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who I also call Yahweh Shai, bless you.